everything comes to light, it's going to be horrific, horrendous. Unmasking a killer who'd ghoulishly hidden the body of one of his victims in a cooler he used to deliver homemade granola bars to his customers. He tries to shut the lid of the cooler and it won't shut because her arms keep springing up because rigor set in. Police here in Colorado's Mile High Capital had no idea a psychosexual maniac was in their midst until a beautiful 19-year-old college student named Kenya Monhe mysteriously goes missing. Ironically, on the one day of the year reserved for silly pranks and cheap laughs. April 1st, April Fool's Day. And Kenya's stepfather, Tony, actually thought his wife, Maria, was messing with him when she called him that morning, saying the teenager was nowhere to be found. And I says, oh, OK, Maria, this is not the proper April Fool's joke. You know? And she says, no, Tony, she, and she kind of told me the story. Tony was as frantic as Maria. He loved Kenya like his own flesh and blood, helping raise her since she was 12 after he married her mom. What was Kenya like? In the beginning, very shy. As we went along in, in the relationship, she was, there was something different about her. Something that magically endeared her to Tony. She says, can we just say daughter, father? You know, and I said, if that's what you want, yes. Kenya would be a model big sister to Tony and Maria's two younger children, Kimberly and Anthony. She liked being a boss. She liked telling Kimberly and Anthony what to do. Loved it. And they loved growing up with her looking out for them. It just blew my mind because she was just so happy, always brought so much joy to the house, made everybody happy. She was like a bright light for everyone, so. Your sister was a pretty thing. She was, she was beautiful, everybody, all the guys. I remember at school, I used to be like, oh my goodness, like, what's going on? Why do all these guys keep talking to me about my sister? Kenya had such a kind heart, she even taught a Sunday school class that she had started up herself for the younger kids at her local church. She had leadership qualities, but she was no different than any preteen or teenage girl either. You know, I still had to get on her about homework, cleaning, boys, phones, all the normal stuff. But Kenya had grown into a beautiful young lady who just enrolled in college after graduating high school with dreams of carving out a career for herself in broadcasting. It appeared to me that she liked it because of her being in front of the camera and doing these types of things. Finding herself a job as a customer service rep to pay for her education and rent. She had moved out. She was living with her boyfriend um, and getting on with her life. That is, until Kenya suddenly goes missing while on a night out with some friends. Did you even know Kenya was out that night? No, I did not know. And Tony would be shocked to learn from Kenya's friends that they were all out drinking and partying at a nightclub, even though they were underage. I had no idea about this party life that she had. Secretly going bar hopping for years. She and all of her friends uh, had all obtained false IDs. They were going to the 21 and over clubs in downtown Denver. Now, if that had been all Kenya had done that night, Tony says he would have understood. I did the same thing. You know, I think every teenager does it. And it doesn't matter how many times right. we as parents warn them, mm -hmm. they're never gonna listen. No. But Tony is horrified when Kenya's friends tell him another secret, that a wild Kenya had to be escorted off the premises by security staff. Why was she kicked out of the bar? They said it was because of uh, intense intoxication. She was so drunk that they had to kick her out. Into the empty streets of Denver in the early hours of the morning, wearing a black mini skirt and red high heels. Without her purse, without her phone, without her jacket, you know, and, and so. Who had all that stuff? Her friends did. That was left in the bar. 
It's so out of character for Kenya that Tony immediately suspects someone at the club may have spiked her drink. She was just so out of control. Her friend said they were drinking together and no one had more than anyone else did. And they didn't feel out of control or anything like that. And her actions did not match the amount of alcohol she Correct. had. Correct. So maybe someone did slip a drug in her drink. That is what we believe. And there's one other disturbing detail that sends chills down Tony's spine. She was kicked out with a guy that she was doing some inappropriate things with on the dance floor. And, and it was not that. her boyfriend. And it was not her boyfriend. An alarmed Tony takes the information he's uncovered to police. And rather than wait for them to begin investigating, an impatient Tony turns detective himself, scouring Kenya's cell phone in search of any clue to the identity of that mystery man who'd been thrown out of the club with her. I see all of these names and all of these messages, and I'm going through there, you know. One of the messages screams out to him. And it said, hey, this is Travis, guy from last night, white creepy van. Did you get home OK? Next, police track down the mystery man and uncover this surveillance footage of him with Kenya in the lobby of his apartment building. So if we rely solely on the surveillance video to tell us a story of what was going on that night in Kenya's life, what does the videotape tell us? That night, that text message on her phone that said, hey, this is Travis, guy from last night, white creepy van, did you get home okay? 